Hey there. Uh, wanted to talk about writing for a moment. I do a lot of writing. I mean, I realize that I'm a podcaster, but at the end of the day, what I really do is I write. You know, I, I write scripts for lore. I write um, scripts for other shows. I'm editing the writing of other people. Uh, I'm writing ad scripts. You know, I'm constantly writing stuff. And that's just the stuff that you you bump into it here. I'm, I'm writing things that you haven't seen yet, projects that are in the pipeline. Um, so yes, yeah, so every day I pretty much sit down at my desk and I write. I'm not saying that I like have the secret. That's not how it works. Um, everybody's wired differently. Everybody has different personalities. So I just thought I'd share uh, like three hot tips for you. These are three things that I really hold uh, close and I use all the time. So number one, uh, you need to read out loud what you're writing. You don't have to do it the entire time. You don't have to read word for word everything out loud. But I find that, especially because what I make is for audio, you know, I'm writing a script for a podcast. I need that language to roll off my tongue better. I need it to, to feel right. And I've just learned over the years that there's certain word orders, certain combinations of words, certain uh, things that people might write on a page that just, they just don't work uh, for the spoken word. So I really do try my best to write something that looks like a polished history paper, you know, when I'm writing lore. But um, I also have worked in there things that, that wouldn't fly for your typical, you know, college uh, writing class that people will tell you that you can't begin sentences with and or but. But I found that when I talk out loud with people, like having a conversation like this, words like and and but actually connect sentences uh, logically. They help people uh, move from one stepping stone to the next. And so for me, I kind of toss that rule out the, out the window and I say, look, I, I want to read this out loud. And I think right here I need to have a, you see, comma, or but this is what's going on next. So, um, so yeah, I read things out loud and uh, I write for that spoken word format. I don't write for what looks good on a printed page because most people aren't going to see it. Um, another thing that I uh, try to stick to, tip number two, would be to um, stop formatting constantly. How many times have you sat down to write and you have gotten distracted because you think, oh, I wonder if I change the font. Will this look more like the finished book that I'm writing? That kind of stuff just needs to stop. You've got to stop formatting. And so one thing that I recommend uh, to save yourself from the distraction of changing fonts, changing alignments, all that kind of stuff, paragraph spacing, is to go and copy the text of an article from a website. Just highlight it, copy it, and then open up your typical writing uh, software and paste it in there and then format that text. Make it the right font that you like, um, make it the right size, pick the alignment that you like, figure out your paragraph spacing and how do you want headings to be if you've got them. And then what you do is you take one of those paragraphs and you highlight the paragraph and you just type two X's, okay? And then hit the enter or the carriage return and see if that paragraph spacing stays and type another two X's and then return and another two X's. And now you can only have those three pairs of X's in your document, save it and file name that as like writing template, you know, and put it in a folder. And every time you start a new project, a new short story, a new chapter of your novel or a new book, whatever it might be, a new blog post, um, you don't have to think about formatting anymore. Just go over there and select the top two X's and start typing. And it's gonna obey the formatting that you had applied to those two X's. And now you just keep typing. I think it's, it's a shame when people pull away from the creative moment to tweak a font size in their document. Uh, it's, it's distracting and it takes you off course. So don't do it. Do it all ahead of time and then use your template document. Okay, last thing. Number three, stay focused. Um, when I write an episode of Lore, I create this episode that I, I've got a, a research team. They've researched each episode. Those outlines that I get from them are structured to the story that we've planned. We know that the introduction will cover this. We know that Acts 1, 2, and 3 will follow this structure. We know what we'll talk about in the summary. And then we know that that epilogue at the end after the ads, we know we're going to cover another type of story. And that has all the material that I need to write the episode script. Very, very frequently, almost without fail, I will write an episode that doesn't include all the material in the outline uh, because we have a plan. And I want to do that 
uh, within restrictions that I've given myself. Because look, if you don't set any restrictions for yourself, if you don't say, here's my page limit for each section, here's my word count, whatever, you are gonna have um, wildly varying uh, pieces of content. One episode could be 65 minutes, the next could be 25 minutes. And uh, I, I think the discipline is required to make this more consistent. And more consistent means that the listener always kind of gets what they're looking for. I think that's one of the one of the unsung heroes of successful podcasts is uh, consistency. Because if you create a consistent product, people start to depend on it and go deeper into it. So I may look at my outline and say, oh, look, all the research here for this particular act that I'm gonna write, I could fill five pages with this, but I have to pick two pages worth of material. So that leads to that email that I'll get the next day once the episode goes live um, from a listener who says, oh, I loved your episode, but you totally forgot this one branch of folklore. I didn't forget it. I didn't forget it. I know it. I just found that it wasn't essential for getting my listeners from point A to point B. What's that Indiana Jones movie? Is it the second one, the, the Temple of Doom, when he's they're in the plane and they're trying to keep it in the air and they're throwing things out of the airplane? Like that's what you're doing when you're trying to land your narrative arc in a page limit versus just writing for as long as you want. At some point you have to throw non-essential things out of the airplane so that you can fly straight and nimble and fast. And so stay focused when you write. Know what your plan is and don't distract that narrative with things that you think are cool and you're confusing that for essential. Art is better within restrictions. And so if you can restrict your page count and your word count, you can force yourself to tell tighter, more concise stories that engage people better. And it just requires killing your darlings, you know, killing off those favorite facts that you'd love to have in there, but there's just no room in the narrative for them. Learning how to make that judgment, how to filter that content is really where you start to see the rubber hit the road for a writer, where you can, you can uh, filter through and say, that's essential, but these three things are not. I will focus on what's essential for this, this portion of the story. So there you go. Little, uh, little blog style writing advice for you today. I hope you like this. And uh, if it helped, give it a thumbs up, give it a like in the comments down below. So uh, there you go. Thanks folks. Take care.